Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Rebore in the 15-minute pool on ICC. I'm white, and I'm opening with E4 against this guy with the very scary Flaming Skull icon, and he is playing the modern defense, G6 on move 1, and I will occupy the center. And if Bishop G7, I'll probably continue with Knight C3. Now, Black can play this in a couple different ways. He chooses D6. Usually, that indicates that Black will be going for a setup involving A6 and B5. So, let's play in principled fashion and occupy the center with f4 yeah so a6 and i believe knight f3 is the move here and if black continues with b5 i'm going to play bishop d3 this is the best square for the bishop now that c4 is not available it actually might be the best square regardless of whether c4 is available knight d7 there's a great book written on the modern by tiger hill art pearson and I believe the first edition of this book came out like 10 years ago, and it's recently been updated by the author again. And he gives a lot of coverage to this particular setup. And I've never played this from the white side, so this will be a nice little experiment. One thing I do remember is that white would like to play e5 and try to stick this knight on e4. So I am thinking about playing e5 directly. And in fact, I think I will do that. So that means that if black ever plays b4, I can jump my knight into this square. He goes immediately for a counterattack, c5. So I was thinking of taking on d6 against this. I could also consider a pawn sacrifice with e6, trying to get black to take with the f-pawn and thereby weaken his position, but that seems premature. Probably it's smarter to do this. So yeah, let's just take. If black takes on d4, I'll take on e7, so black simply recaptures. Now, black has played very aggressively with their queenside pawns. They moved every pawn from the A file through the D file already. I don't know that I have to re even react to this structure yet. I'm tempted just to castle and try to get my rook to E1 quickly. I could consider taking or maybe playing something like knight E4 or bishop E4. But I don't know that it's even necessary yet, so... Maybe just castles. If castles and black takes on d4, I was thinking just knight e2 or rook e1 check and then knight e2. And I suspect that the doubled pawn is going to give black some grief. Before I make this decision, though, what if I just play knight e4 attacking the pawn straight away? Is there something to be said for that? Black can probably just play queen c7 in that case. And I'm not seeing too much. So let's just castle. We're letting black take on d4, mind you, but that's going to result in black having double isolated d-pawns. And also black lags a little bit in development. Full disclosure, by the way, I played a game earlier today in the 15-minute pool against an 1800, and I lost. That's why you see my rating a little lower. I'm no longer in the 2400s. The reason why I'm not posting that game is... Something sort of suspicious happened in a key moment of the game, a key stage. And I suspect that the player I played might have been using engine assistance for that stage. But I'm not 100% sure, and I want to give that player the benefit of the doubt. So I thought it was best that I just not post that game, because I do kind of allude to some of my concerns in that. But I'm not as certain as I would like to be in posting a game like that. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. I pretty much only uh, call out cheaters if I think they're absolutely cheating and there's not a doubt in my mind. As happened a couple days ago uh, in a Blitz game that I played against this user, Tatalimov, I think was his username. That was so obvious that I had no qualms about posting the video and calling that player out. But this player I played earlier today, I think there was something weird going on, but I'm not sure. And... Uh, in that case, I don't think I can, in good conscience, post the video and especially accuse them. It's just, it's not my place right now. Um, I don't know if even I'm going to report them. <laughs> so just wanted to let you guys know about that. So black took on d4, attacking my knight. So I was thinking rookie one check. What's nice is that knight e7 would fail to knight d5, as far as I can tell, hitting that knight. So yeah, let's throw in this check and see if we can force black to play king f8. Just hiding their king. 
But in doing so, now they can't castle, and also there's some weak pawns in the center, as I was saying a moment ago. So knight e2, do we like knight e2? I see a plan whereby I can try to just get the pawn back. Uh, knight e2, queen b6, and then bishop e4, followed by knight takes d4 soon. That's a safe way to try to recover the pawn. I could try to play more aggressively with a move like knight e4, going and attacking d6, but that seems a bit more speculative. There's also bishop e4 hitting the rook, but I think that might fail to d takes c3, bishop takes a8, c takes b2. So let's go for this move. And he instantly plays queen b6. So bishop e4, ah, but that would fail to d3 check. I didn't notice that initially. <laughs> so that's not going to pan out because of that move. Hence, I could play something like king h1, but maybe it's just better to develop. Like knight g3, bishop d2, etc. a4 is another move that comes to mind. Trying to undermine black's queen side. f5 also is plausible. Hmm. It would be very nice to win this pawn back. Hence, I was thinking about b3, bishop b2, and just taking. But if b3, I think bishop b7, and black might be ready to take on f3, shatter my structure, and try to go from there. So that looks a little slow. Okay, so I'm just going to play this practically. I'm going to let black have their extra pawn for now. I'm going to play knight g3 to unleash my rook on the e-file and also have my queen protect the knight on f3. And probably develop the bishop to d2 and maybe keep f5 in mind. I have about 10 minutes to my opponent's 13 roughly. They play knight c5. This seems to be giving me more of a reason to play pawn f5. Yeah, I'm going to play this, and I'm not going to calculate it too much because there isn't a whole lot to calculate, first of all. But even if they take it, I'm not going to concern myself with trying to win the pawn back immediately because I, I probably need this bishop glued to the d3 square to avoid problems on the a7 g1 diagonal. For instance, if g takes f5, say I play knight takes f5, he could trade and then play something like d3, and that would get messy. So instead, black just brings the bishop out. Now I do wish that my rook was on the f-file to oppose the king. This is still pretty good, though, having the queen, or the rook, rather, on the e-file, and maybe my queen coming to e2 at some stage. So, how best to develop my initiative here? Maybe just bishop f4? Eyeing d6 and contributing to my development? Queen e2 doesn't threaten, any, threaten anything in particular, so I don't know that I want to play that way. What about taking on g6 and then playing knight g5? That seems interesting. Or going knight g5 directly. Maybe that's even stronger. Knight g5, maybe just knight f6. Am I getting anywhere? I can't tell. Possibly not. Bishop g5 is also crossing my mind to try to induce black to play something kind of weakening like h6, and then maybe I take on g6 at that stage. So many possibilities here. Yeah, bishop g5 could be a decent attempt. I feel like my bishop would be well, better placed there than on f4. So bishop g5, h6, f takes g6. I don't know if I'm getting enough for the piece, though. h takes g5, g takes f7. They can even develop their knight then. It is not clear. 
b4 is another move I'm thinking about just to try to get black to take or do something with that knight but maybe I don't have to rush that if I take I think they're going to take with the h pawn and then let's say knight g5 knight f6 and where is my attack hmm you know what I'm just going to develop with bishop f4 even though I'm not 100% certain about the viability of this square over say g5 i should bring my pieces into the game black might just play knight f6 and ignore the fact that i have a lead in development they probably should do that please 97 instead hmm attacking f5 but I feel like this is a, a worse square than f6. Sacking the exchange doesn't appear to do much. I could play f6, bishop takes f6, bishop h6 check, and then bishop g7, I take and I win a piece. So f6, bishop takes, bishop h6 check, they'd have to play king g8 most likely. And is anything going on there? Maybe not. There's also queen e2. Queen e2 if I want to attack the knight. Maybe that knight is hopping into d5, though. That could be the destination square. I think it very well might be. Hmm. Yeah, this is a, a tricky position. No doubt about it. I think I'm just going to play queen d2. I know that knight d5 can be played, but then I can play bishop h6, and offering to swap those dark square bishops should help me out a lot. Although black's knight might make its way into e3. We'll see. Takes on f3 instead. Okay, so again, I can think about f6, but is there anything that has changed? Take bishop h6 check, king g8. Probably not. So let's just recapture. Rebore doing well on the clock. Quick player, this one. All right, so let's continue as planned here and see if they stick the knight in on e3. Some cool possibilities if that's the case. Like, what if knight e3... I could take with the rook... Intending d takes e3, bishop takes g, or, uh, sorry, queen c3 instead, but looks like that's going to be in the background because they take on d3. So maybe bishop takes g7, king takes, queen takes. That knight is coming into e3 at the end, but it's kind of unstable there, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to, well, first I have to take on g7 if I want to do that. Again, there's the possibility of f6, but he just takes with the knight here. Hmm. I could take with the pawn and have my queen still defend h6, but I think he's going to bring the knight into e3, which might solve a lot of black's problems. I'm looking at some weird stuff all of a sudden. F6, knight takes f6, knight f5. Or... Huh. Bishop takes g7, king takes g7, knight h5 check is even possible. Problem is I have very little time. Okay, f6, knight takes... Bishop takes g7, king takes g7, knight f5 check... Pawn takes, queen g5 check, king g8. I don't think I have quite enough there. I have a perpetual, actually, but do I have better? I don't know. Because if I just take on g7, and he takes, and I take on d3, I think he has knight f4. And I'm not sure about the way that's working out or not working out. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Someone is honking their horn in my neighborhood. So I'm thinking, like, do I try to force a draw or do I actually go for it here? Given the time, forcing a draw might be the prudent decision. Okay, I'm going to do this. And then after knight takes, I think I'm going to take g7 and then play knight f5. There's also knight f5 right away. I'm not sure it really makes a difference. Probably not so much. Hmm. Knight f5 right away. Or take, take, then knight f5. If take, take, then knight f5, king g8 could be played, but queen h6 is looking good. So let's go with the most forcing one. Check. There's also queen g5 straight away, but I don't trust it, especially with the amount of time I have. Check. Okay, so let's check. Note of king f8, there's queen h6, followed by mate on g7. So I think they pretty much have to take. I could try king g8, but queen h6, and again, they're going to have to take. So let's check. come in, check. And check. check here. Okay, so now I could try to win with king h1. Looking for rook g1, but that looks quite sketchy. <laughs> Maybe taking the, the knight is not bad at this stage. Arguing that I still have a perpetual if I want it. Actually, that's quite interesting. You know what? I'm going to risk it, even though I have less than two minutes left. I don't see a way that black can get out of this perpetual anyways, so I still have the possibility of queen g5, queen h6. But now I want to try to play it slow and go king h1 or maybe king f2 and give a check on the g-file or just pick up the black knight. Queen takes f6 is threatened, of course. If knight e8, again, hide the king. And that's looking bad for them. This is a definite gamble with the amount of time I have, but we'll see if it pays off. So if d5, I think just king h1 is losing for black because this knight is stuck. If black were to move it, they would lose the queen. And rook g1 just appears to be coming no matter what. So knight e8 may be the most practical move for them. They're going to play rook e8 instead, but I think I can just take on f6 as I was describing. What about just king h1 first? Let's consider that. King h1 threatens, well, queen takes f6 and taking on e8. Yeah, maybe king h1. We do not have a lot of time to decide, so I'm going to go with that. If queen d8, I can take on e8 check. And then queen takes e8 would be forced. And then I can take on f6. And I must be close to winning there. If not winning. This is scary. A lot of stuff to calculate with extremely limited time. <laughs> queen takes f6 would have been the safe play on the previous move. Okay, so now I think take, because he's threatening f3. Check. So let's do this. He's got to take with the queen. As if knight takes, just check, and he's going to get mated. So yeah, queen takes is forced, and now we come queen takes f6. Because if I check, there's knight g4. And he actually gets to keep the position closed. So let's do this. Now, I believe queen e5 might be close to forced. Oh, but he's going to lose if queen e5. If queen e5, I have queen d8 check, king g7, rook g1 check, king h6, queen h4 mate, or queen g5 mate. 
Yep, he plays it, but I believe he's going to be done in. I could play rook g1, but king f8, and he guards the rook down here. There's queen d8 then, but that's not as clear. This, on the other hand, check. is pretty clear. So we give a check down here. Check. And bye-bye black. King h6, queen g5, mate. All right, and he resigned. So the two-minute drill, <laughs> playing down a piece, but black having a very suspiciously placed king paid off for us. I wonder right here, after c takes d3, what black's best move is. When we get to that point in the analysis, I'm going to pause and try to figure it out for myself. And you might want to do the same if you're interested. So let's go back. So my opponent obviously played this game very quickly and kind of recklessly at stages. But against me in particular, I don't know that that's that bad of a strategy, actually, given that I'm recording and <laughs> many people know I'm recording, too. So this is a modern defense, and it's kind of a properly played one by black with d6 and then a6 and going for b5. That's how a lot of modern players will treat this. From the black side, I've often played c6 and d5, this Gurganidze system. In that aforementioned book by Tiger Hillart Pearson, he advocates the approach that Rabore used in this game, though. So I played f4, gaining more space. There's nothing wrong with a, a more positional, slower treatment like knight f3. Knight f3, bishop e2. But if you want to take the bull by the horns in this opening, you play f4. I think this is clearly the most challenging move to black and his setup. So a6. a4 is a move that you see quite often trying to discourage b5, but I'm not completely sold on a4, and I believe Grandmaster Hillart Pearson also doesn't think too highly of this move. You can compare it to in the Scandinavian that I've been playing a lot recently with queen d8, where black plays that line with a6 and b5 against the bishop on c4. A lot of people will meet a6 with a4, but I don't believe it's necessary. So I played knight f3, black played b5, I went bishop d3, and then knight d7. So my book knowledge kind of ended right here, but I just remembered this idea of e5 and knight e4. So that's why I played e5. Let's turn the engine on right now, though. e5 flicked across the screen, so it's probably not a bad attempt. And Rabore immediately played c5. It kind of seemed like this was still part of their preparation. It's likely he might have played this position before even, or at the very least studied it. So c5, and now we have a lot of pawn tension in the center. So I took on d6. Perhaps that's not the best move, because I get the sense that black might have been okay in the ensuing complications. So bishop e4 and bishop e3 come to mind. Yeah, bishop e4 does hit the rook, but what am I gaining after rook b8? Now castles. Casually whisk your king away while pawns are hanging in the center. <laughs> take. Queen takes. The modern can tend to produce pretty obscure looking positions. And this position's no exception, I don't think. I mean, black's setup has elements of like a Sicilian defense, the way that black has their pawn structure. It's kind of a dragon-like pawn formation. Dragodorf, if you will. Very confusing position. So I took on d6. And I know that the author of that book, Grandmaster Hillart Pearson, he also talks about scenarios where if white takes on d6, black will take on d4 in reply. So maybe this is possible. The engine seems to think so. And then if I take here, uh, knight takes, okay. Knight e2. Right now it's equal material, but the engine likes black. Maybe because this pawn will be tough for white to deal with. Bishop b7. There's no doubt that black's bishops occupy attractive diagonals, and their knights are flexibly placed too. Yeah, I recall positions like this in the book as well. So I think for me, this would be the position to look up and see where I could improve. I'm going to check it out in that book after I'm done with this video. Some people have asked, where do you go or what do you use to learn opening theory? And 
The answer is you use a variety of sources. You use books, you use databases, you use opening theory websites like chesspublishing.com. Uh, a venture I'm working on right now is called Chessable, and that's an opening theory website, uh, or more accurately, a site that will help you learn openings. That's coming out very soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> but basically, you have to use a variety of sources. Don't just stick to one thing. There's no like bad magic bullet for uh, learning openings. You have to hunt down the best resources. Sometimes it might even be just a key game that was played between two strong GMs in a line. And that game might have set the theoretical landscape for whatever opening you're studying. So here I castled, and my idea was to sack the pawn. He took right away. It didn't seem like he was too impressed. I guess he thought about it a little bit. But after rook e1, it's annoying for black that he can't play knight e7 because I have this knight e5 move ganging up on the knight on e7. So black does forfeit their right to castle with king f8. Hmm. So also if that's the case, black needs an improvement right here and maybe just knight e7 directly. Keeping the pawn tension, not making a decision about the pawn on d4 is correct. Yeah, because that covers the e-file and black is ready to castle next. It's not like white's going to be thrilled to play d5 or d takes c5, so probably leaving the pawn there is perfectly adequate. Check. But we'll see. The position was still complex even after this. So I played knight e2 and later sent the knight to g3, but I don't think it's well placed on g3. Maybe knight e4 is better, as the computer is advocating. Hitting this pawn? In this case, I wouldn't be playing to try to win this pawn back, as I was kind of envisioning with knight e2, but I'm playing more so for activity. Knight c5, knight takes, pawn takes, b4, that looks pretty radical. <laughs> Trying to undermine black's pawns. What if they take? Bishop d2. And white is... Hoping for compensation. It seems like they have it. Down two pawns, but the computer liking White's act activity. But I chose knight e2, to which black responded with queen b6, holding the pawn on d4. And then I sent the knight over to g3. I mentioned that b3, bishop b2, followed by taking on d4, would be a plan I'd like to achieve if I had time. But I think after bishop b7, the fact that bishop takes f3 is always possible is going to slow me down. Like if I did this, I think black would be happy to part with the bishop, double up my pawns, and ensure that I can't easily regain this pawn. So I sent the knight over to the king side, clearing the e-file for my rook. Black played knight c5. Some of these moves seemed uh, a little sketchy for black in the sense that it was almost like he was closing his eyes to my kingside play. Specifically with knight c5 and also knight e7. We'll see coming up, but I feel like knight f6 would have been better than knight e7. So for ma maximum flexibility, black should probably play bishop b7 here. Yeah, get the bishop on this diagonal and not move this knight yet. Because I think the only benefit of playing knight c5 is that he might be able to take the bishop. Maybe there's some intention of bringing the bishop out this way, but I doubt it. It seems like the a8, h1 diagonal is the more promising diagonal for black's light square bishop. So here I played f5. I need to play actively if I want to gain compensation. That move is engine approved. And then bishop b7. The annoying thing was I didn't have a lot of time to figure out how best to gain compensation. I considered a lot of candidate moves here. Bishop g5, bishop f4 as I played, taking on g6, knight g5. The direct attacks on the black king didn't seem to pan out. For instance, I was considering knight g5 and then if h6 sacking here, or even, actually I think I was considering this one, but sacking on f7 might be better. But I just wasn't seeing the compensation after something like this, even. I'm not sure that I can draw Black's King out far enough to make it worth my while. And I'm down two points of material now. Because originally I'm down a pawn. And if I sacrifice, I'll be down even further. 
But if h6 can be met strongly by knight takes f7, maybe I should have given that more thought. King takes, Check. pawn takes g6, king f8, knight h5. Black is under a lot of pressure. Rook f1 could be coming. Yeah, this looks nasty. Black's king is naked on f8. But after knight g5, h6 is not forced, I suppose. What if black simply develops, let's say knight f6? Yeah, it's unclear. Slight edge black. So, yeah, lots of candidate moves and a tough choice to be made. I spent, yeah, almost three minutes deciding whether to play bishop f4 or a different move. <laughs> even, even moves like rook b1, rook f1 are considered by the engine. Rook b1 is not a move I would play in a million years. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> if you play rook b1, it's either a mouse slip or you're using an engine. <laughs> Who in their right mind would play that move here? Okay, so I played bishop f4, and then black played knight e7. I just thought knight f6 was better. I didn't see a, a whole lot of good points behind knight e7. Because knight e7, he's on the same file as my rook, and there's more threats involving f6. Whereas with knight f6, I'm still not clear what I'm doing. I might have continued queen d2 as I did in the game and try for bishop h6. Knight g4 could be played. Aha, uh -huh. stopping me from playing the bishop in here. And black might just stick the knight on e3 at an inconvenient time and try to kill my coordination between the, the dark square bishop and the queen. He's got a lot of play on this diagonal. So instead, black played this knight e7 move. I went queen d2. Downside of queen d2 is that I can't take back with a queen when black captures on f3 here. And this is what happened. Okay, so some good moves being played by both sides, it seems. Bishop takes f3 followed by knight d5 is best for black. And here I stuck the bishop in on h6. Again, like the computer is suggesting queen side stuff, but that's not in the vicinity where I'm operating right now. Like a move like a4 just seems out of left field to me. Maybe that's what white needs right now. Or at least that's what white needs according to the computer. I did consider stuff like a4 earlier. Let's say right about here. When black's queen made an appearance on b6. But I never thought it would cause any great concerns to black. But once I've come this far, I'm probably going to be playing on the king side almost exclusively. Or on the center. Trying to make my attack work. Rookie 2 was another suggestion, but again, it seems slow. I think bishop h6 is a human way to continue the attack. But you know what? After bishop h6, the move that most concerned me was knight e3. And I believe I mentioned this move. Or I was mentioning some possibilities after this move. So black is threatening to take the bishop. So Check. assuming I take, I think I was looking at something like this. Check. But f6 seems to solve black's problems entirely. Yeah, and white's attack fizzles out. I looked at a line in my head. Rook takes e3, d takes e3, and now queen c3. Trying to use the pin on this bishop to attack g7. But yeah, even here, rook g8. Also, the problem with um, rook takes e3 is black can respond with bishop takes h6. In between move, and I'm skewered. Here and here. If rook e8 check, probably black's going to escape, huh? Check. Check here. King e7. And he's going to take a walk towards the queen side. So this might be a stage in the game where Rabore could have benefited from slowing down a little bit. Because knight e3 would have been inconvenient for me with five minutes on my clock. Like, that's a powerful knight. Note that if I come back, and do something like this, I think I'm going to run afoul of problems on this diagonal. Like if take... Yeah, I probably have to take with my queen. Because rook takes could run into maybe bishop d4 or take here first and then bishop d4. So take, take, queen takes. Bishop takes b2. Black's again up a pawn. Still looks a little scary as far as their king goes. But without my dark square bishop, it's going to be hard to land a decisive blow. 
And if my gotcha. queen leaves this diagonal, all of a sudden I got to worry about discovered attacks like knight takes d3 and whatnot. King g8. Big advantage to black, if not winning advantage. It's an art form to knowing when you can play fast and when you should slow down. And certainly Rebore was playing this entire game quickly and uh, not playing the best moves as a result. But had they realized that my attack was kind of uh, shaky and had he considered some of the resources that I might have to continue that attack, I think he would have been, when, been best off just slowing down a little bit, trying to defuse it. But he took here, and then I played this f6 move. The engine is showing, showing triple zeros, meaning it thinks the position is a draw. Yeah, f6. I thought about taking first Check. and then playing knight h5, which might be similar. Check. That also looks like a draw. It's the same type Check. of checking pattern. Check. And I have this perpetual if I want. Or again, I could try to go for more if I wished, but that seems risky. Hmm. So I played f6, deflecting the knight. Check. And then take. Check. And knight f5. Black took. So if king f8, queen Check. h6 is coming and black's getting checkmated, that's Check very clear. Mate. If king g8, it's trickier, but I believe queen h6 is still good. Threatening mate. If he covers with knight h5, note checkmate. that I have knight e7 checkmate. That's nice. So black would have to take at this stage, and yeah, that's going to be almost the same. Check. Check king here, and Check. I once again have the option of a perpetual. So as played, black just took the knight straight Check. away. Check. And this is the toughest moment because I had to decide with limited time whether I was going to go for the win or just settle for the perpetual check. What's kind of nice in these scenarios is when you know that you have a draw in your pocket, if necessary. I was pretty sure that C takes D3 was not going to spoil anything if I want to go for the draw like on the next move. Because this knight is under attack and I'm still threatening the same queen G5, queen H6 operation. And here he thought... A little over a minute, and then played a move that probably loses, rook e8. So black had knight d7 available. And that introduces this possibility. Trying to send the knight to g6, where it would perfectly block any attempts I have to checkmate him down the g-file. So if I play like king h1 now, I'm going to be too too late. Check. If the knight gets here and I have no other threats, it's game over. The fact that Black's Rook is stuck in the corner scarcely matters. He's going to find a way to unwind. I don't have enough threats here to keep the fires burning. So I think if I were Black, I would spend as long as necessary to try to find the best defense at this stage. I think he might have looked at a line or two and just decided to go with Rook E8, but that's not a good strategy. This is an incredibly sharp position, meaning that the result of the game could be decided on any one move. So he needs to find the most accurate defense. Maybe there's only one. Maybe it's only knight d7. I think the engine was saying knight d5 for a second. Knight d5 might also work. So what's the plan with knight d5? If I come here, play f6 and try to walk the king out this way. Huh. That seems riskier than the knight d7, knight f8 to g6 plan. But yeah, I could see here also why black might be holding. Rook e2, trying to get the other rook over while covering the e-file. King f7, check. queen h5, check. And once more, white must settle for a draw. King f8, check. queen h6. We have a draw check. in hand. What if I go for more, like rook g1? Knight e3. You see how this knight can insert itself to block a file from my rook at a key stage and kill off my attack? And now, even Check. though my pieces can invade a little bit, yeah, Check. I can even do something like this. It doesn't matter. His king is feeling at home in the center of the board, thanks to this knight blocking my play. Queen h5 trying for this. Rook a7 defending. And black is winning. Well, I said I was going to pause the... Uh, engine eval and try to figure out some stuff on my own. I didn't do that, obviously. 
Sorry if you were waiting for me to cue you on that, but uh, suffice it to say, Black must spend time here. They have 11 of their starting 15 minutes remaining. They've got plenty of time, and I'm hurting on the clock, so it's just in their best interest to slow down and see if they can defend. So instead, he played rookie 8. The engine wants me to take on f6 right away. That's probably also good. I just like the idea of getting the, the king over. Ah, king h1 was a blunder. Hmm. So let's, okay, let's figure this out since we didn't calculate the other one. So why is rook takes e1 check suddenly a draw? So if rook takes e1 check, rook takes e1, what is black going to do? Maybe queen d8 then? Guarding the knight? Then if I play rook g1 check, knight g4, pawn takes, they can play f4. And close off the attack down the G file. Yeah, that's not as clear. I don't know why that would be a draw necessarily, though. Like 0, 0.00 indicates that I probably have to take a perpetual because anything else is losing. So rook takes e1, rook takes e1. I'm threatening queen f6, and I'm also threatening rook g1, perhaps. The knight can't move, though, because of rook e8 mate, or rook g1, depending. So I would think it's going to be queen d8. Maybe queen c6? Could be queen c6 attacking down this diagonal. Yeah, that could be it, because then if rook g1 check, knight g4, and I can't even take with the pawn because I'm pinned. So just to recap that. Rook takes e1, rook takes e1, queen c6. And I might have to go for queen g5, king f8, queen h6 again because of the threat on f3. Okay, let's check that. Check. So here, here, yep, queen c6. A precise move, precise continuation. But this works. Because if check. I check here, knight g4... Yeah, and this pawn is pinned, so white's attack is not crushing. Again, I'd probably be lucky to draw from here. Probably rook g2, queen takes f3. Point of rook g2 being to threaten to take on g4. Check. Check here. Check. check. And this is a perpetual check. check pattern. That's good to know. This game was eventful to pretty much the very end. After king h1, I am not winning, as I thought I was. Instead, I should play queen takes f6 directly, threatening rook takes e8 mate. And now queen c6. Check. Check here. Check, check here. Probably king f2 at the end. Now he has a check here. So check. take, take. Oh, and now king h1. Mm hmm. So the key difference between those lines is that in this case, with the queen on c6, I can actually take here at the right moment, thereby Check. deflecting his queen from attacking f3, then hide my king, and there's no knight anymore that can block on g4, so black is toast. So queen takes f6 should have been played. King h1 was inaccurate by me. But black handed the game away by playing instead uh, queen d8, was it? Or sorry, queen c6. Why did I think he played queen d8? I think queen d8 was a move I was calculating, but yeah, he played queen c6 here instead. So maybe he had the right idea, just the wrong move order. So if he had swapped the rooks first, then his queen wouldn't get deflected. Yeah, because this is the same problem that I just described. After rook takes e8 as played in the game, he must take with the queen because knight takes runs into check, check forcing knight g7 check and mate. checkmate. So, yeah, Check. it's a move order problem. In the game, this happened. He had to take with the queen. Then I take here, and rook g1 is on the docket, and there's nothing to be done. Queen e5 as played, trying to defend the rook in the corner so that after check, king f8, queen takes h8 is not played, just runs into the game check. continuation. Queen check, here, check. check, and it's mate. King h6 here. Check mate. 
or black can give up the queen on g3 first if they like. Okay, so fun stuff. Once again, you see time management being an important takeaway from this game. Black's time management was not good in a critical position where they had to find a precise defense right here. C takes D3. And it looks like they have at least two moves, knight D7 and knight D5 that hold, but neither of them are obvious, kind of taking the knight away from the king. Check. They chose the wrong one at that stage, but I gave the game or the, the win back right here after rook e8 by not playing queen takes f6. Check. And I should also Check. say that my time management at the outset of the game was poor. So I think we both exhibited poor time management. <laughs> Me because I probably spent too long getting to like, I don't know, a position like this. I already was under five minutes. Although I must say it was pretty complicated. And, um, you know, I always cut myself a little slack given that I'm commenting the game. <laughs> I swear, one of these days I'm going to get good at Commenting and playing fast. It'll happen. And I'm going to let you guys know when it happens. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm usually down on time, but working on it. Still, very intriguing game. Yeah, I think Black also could have benefited from taking time right here after Bishop H6. Because you just get the sense when they played Knight takes D3, like they weren't looking at anything in terms of uh, taking on G7 and Knight H5, or as played F6 and taking in the Knight F5. I don't think... Any of that was anticipated by Black. Otherwise, they probably would have thought twice about doing Knight takes D3 and might have played Knight E3 instead, which looks to be much stronger. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this game. As always, please let me know if you have any feedback. Put it in the comments. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.